So now let's summarize a little. Throughout this course, we would think of communication as the process of meaning creation through interaction and symbolic exchange of messages within the different context. We'll think of theory as an abstract, thus very structured explanation of the reality through a set of mutually linked concepts. Yes, we will discuss different concepts and imply them into the big theory which describes the reality. Also, we've been talking about this ongoing research cycle with, between theory testing and theory building. Yes, it never stops and you are already a part of this even when you're working not on a scholarly theory but on the common sense theory or on a working theory. We need to keep in mind that there are two big groups of theories and research, interpretive and objective. Objective research is looking for the single truth and interpretive research provides an interpretation and sees the particular situations within a given context through a certain lenses. It's focusing on creating understanding and providing meaning to what's going on within the communicative situation, while objective research is looking for generalized laws and the relationship between variables dependent and independent. Along with the distinction between objective and interpretive research, we would like to focus at seven traditions of Craig's typology within the communicative theory. We can see communication as a cybernetic process, socio-psychological, socio-cultural, critical, rhetorical, phenomenological, and semiotic. What I want you to do here is to think which approach is more related to the recent situations uh, you've been confused about, uh, some communicative problems which can be solved by the usage of theory. How do you see communication and what is the most important and valuable characteristic of communicative process for you in personal? And as we now know quite a lot about theory and approaches to the theories and approaches to the communication, we will move on to the next parts of our course. So what's next? Well, we do have another eight classes upcoming and before I will tell you a little bit of each one, I want to tell you about the homework. Yes, we will have a little bit of the homework. Well, you've already noticed that there are some questions you have to answer within the course. So this is made in order for you to focus on the content and follow us as uh, we will move on with our instructions and lectures. Uh, also, we will have this discussion boards and Facebook group where you will be able to leave your comments, to provide a little bit of feedback and ask the questions for the instructors which we'll be very happy to answer. Each week we will have a long test, well, not very long, but it would be a test you would need to take in order to get the grade for this class. Uh, as well as sometimes we will do some writing, because writing is cool and writing is very helpful to understand what are you doing and to reflect a little bit, because just speaking sometimes is not enough. So we will do a couple of essays where we will be checked by your peers, so follow the content of our videos quite tightly so you can provide a fair grading for your classmates. So what's definitely next? Next is week two. Week two will be all about interpersonal communication, how do individuals interact with each other, how to build, how to maintain, and how to develop the relationship to the proper level. What are the variables, what are the differences, and what are the key points at which we should focus during this interpersonal communication. I am quite sure that with some recall to your previous experience and with some practice, this module will be able to enhance your interpersonal communication skills and bring it up to the next level. After which, uh, it comes with the group communication, right? In this course, we would follow it from the very essential one to the larger one and more complicated. Uh, you definitely are studying or maybe you're working, but you must be involved somehow in the group dynamic and the group work. So the week three devoted to the group communication will help us to answer the questions how to make a tighter group, how to make better decisions within this group, and what is the role of leadership uh, in a group work. 
Week four is all about persuasion and public speaking. So we would not practice, but we, yeah, we might, but we will think about the way how to build a persuasive message and how to choose the channels very accurately. So the message will reach the audience. Uh, it's not that simple as it, as we, as we can think about it but it's rather a complex process and it includes a lot of uh, variables and characteristics. So rhetoric is not only about making a good speech or delivering this good speech, but rhetoric is also about the process which, uh, the process of delivery of this good speech. After this, uh, we talk about persuasion uh, and as a person who would like to be persuasive, we can step into the shoes of media and take a look how media is influences us, is influencing us. So now as we know a little bit about persuasion, let's take a shoes of media and try to see how media is influencing us and our reality. Uh, so in this uh, part of the course during the week five, we focus on the very early media effects. What happened when television and radio came to the agenda and how did it change uh, the ways our news are communicated, first of all, and how the information dissemination actually restructured uh, with the appearance of mass media. After this, we will discuss uh, cultivation effect of uh, media and uh, the selectivity of our perception in terms of media consumption. Uh, well, here I would just go a little bit behind it. Yes, we have been very selective in our media consumption, which means that uh, we tend to focus on uh, the media sources we already agree with. And we try to avoid all the sources which would provide the alternative opinion. Does it really happen? How to avoid it? And is audience really passive and can be affected? We will answer all this question during this week five. Still, media would lead us closely to the social media. We decided to put it as a separate week, as social media comes along with the big transformation of the society. And we discuss the concept of network society during the week six. We'll talk about uh, online communities and user engagement, how to make it working, and does it really substitute our offline communities or not. As public relations appear to be the field where communication is one of the essential focuses, we talk a little bit about the PR theories. Uh, if you are not a PR practitioner, you might still be interested in a PR week because PR as a public relations or a little bit of promotion can be applicable for an individual level. Anyway, here we move from the level of the individual to the communication between organization. And public relations, it's all about relationship building on just a little bit different scale. So we discuss how the approaches to PR have changed, how companies uh, communicate with each other and how to make persuasive as well as ethical public relation campaign. These are the questions and the objectives of the week six. Uh, moving on, we would focus on critical tradition. You've already catched a little bit of critical. It's all about ideology and discourse. Yes, it's quite complicated, but we are quite sure that thinking about the ideology and thinking on a little bit more abstract level, we can understand better the patterns of communication within the society. That's why we are focusing at critical tradition and we will spend an additional week to go through it. Uh, week nine, as the last and summarizing one, is devoted to summary and applying this theory to practice. In the ninth week, we try to bring up as many examples from the real life as it possible so we can uh, explain once again why communication matters, how to use communication theory, and what is the importance of this communication theory in your life and professional life. Uh, even though each chapter, each 
block of uh, this course would uh, be finalized with uh, some sort of research or some practical example how do we apply one particular theory within the research throughout the research on a real life case we want to bring you more examples as we want and this is one of the most ambitious goals of ours during this course to bridge academia and practice so welcome to the course and i am really excited about what's going to happen next. See you next week.